Cybersecurity is one of the fastest growing industries in the world, and you can learn to become a professional right here in the Valley. That's right. There's a lot of jobs coming up in it. We've been Whoa. hearing in the news a lot. I hear with oh more gosh. about this incredible and fascinating field, our author Salmon. He is the CSN Cybersecurity Program Director. Also with us, Casey Brecken. She is CSN's Public Affairs Executive Director. Great having both of you. Good to be here. Uh, great to have Welcome. you. Thanks for having us. Cybersecurity. Fascinating. I mean, we've been talking about this in the news, past couple months especially. This is not like the hacker's movie anymore. This is legitimate, real life. Tell us about the whole industry of cybersecurity and how it's grown. So one of the interesting things is DHS came out with a statistic uh, a few months ago. Yeah. In the next three years, we're five million people shy. They said wow. this year alone, we're looking at a hundred million, sorry, a million shy. I've had a, a local companies saying they needed to hire a hundred security professionals by two, week, uh, two days ago. Wow. And they wow. came to us and it's like, we don't have enough people to meet this need. So when we start talking about cybersecurity and workforce, if you're in that area, you have a job. It's not a, kind of, I have to find a job? No. We've actually had several people come to us, go, hey, you know, this is what we need. And they're approaching students, not degree completers, but students halfway through a program because oh, they're in yeah. that dire of a need. It's a great wow. opportunity to not Huge. only uh, to, to get that job, but to learn on the job as well as learning in the classroom. Yep. It's phenomenal. So share with us a little bit about the cybersecurity program at CSN. So it's a new program that we've been developing. Right now we are working on developing three associate degrees. Uh, the big thing that separates us between other institutions is, one, we're doing it at a lower level at an associate, but that means that we can focus on the applied, not just theory. So it's the hands-on labs, things of that mm. nature. The governor's office gave us a STEM grant. We actually received the bulk of it. Wow. We got $150,000. So we actually uh, retrofitted a room, uh, purchased lots of equipment, mm -hmm. and we were able to bring in additional faculty and things of that nature so we can actually have a top-notch program. That's fantastic. And I mean, as he was saying, there's a lot of jobs here. So I'm assuming job placement, mm. it, it happens, and it's pretty helpful. Yeah. Correct. This is a growing field, and you have to remember that you come out of this two-year program, starting salary of forty-five, fifty-five thousand dollars a year, which is phenomenal. Fifty thousand is roughly the household median income in mm -hmm. America, so you alone could be making that, mm. which is fantastic, and it's only up from there. Correct. Wow. With additional training, if you're technically inclined, it seems like such a strategic career choice, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. How many students do you have enrolled at this point in the, in the program? Uh, in our forensics program, we have over 300. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. In our network security, I know uh, we have over 200, but it's just it's been increasing. And that's the thing that everyone says, well, I'm not technical, so I can't do it. That's not true. We have non-technical degree programs. Mm. We, uh, when people think cybersecurity, they always go, it's all technical. It's yeah. not. Really? We have compliance. That's more managerial. Yeah. Okay. We have procedural uh, development. Again, that's more managerial. That's not technical. That's trying right. to train your staff to not be idiots. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> which, which they do here a good all idea. the time. <laughs> uh, so we, uh, so, well, okay. Let's take a look at what we have here. Because I mean, that might look like your random router. That looks like some USB keys. Maybe it's a little wireless situation. We're looking at some stuff that could really screw with your day. Yes. So what I did, I broke it up into three categories. These guys right here are different types of wireless adapters. A traditional wireless adapter. Mm -hmm. We have a sub one gigahertz and a Bluetooth adapter. But the problem is all of these have an additional feature that can go into monitor mode, meaning as you turn on your wireless device, I can monitor traffic. Mm -hmm. This costs about $20. Oh. With this, I can break into most wireless. We took a 70-year-old grandma who had never done it before and held her hand, and through 20 minutes later, she was able to crack Wi-Fi without a problem. No kidding. Oh, yep. Like, hold on. Now, there's different layers of Wi-Fi. Uh, Wi-Fi, I know WEP is old and busted. We're talking WPA2. Which is, that's the one that everyone says, that's the one that you have to use because it's secure. That's the strongest encryption. Yes. And a grandma can break it. Yep. Do you have to have what? that plugged into the computer that you're to, trying to break into? No. no. This would be, if I'm attacking someone, yeah. I'd be having this plugged into mine. Oh, you could man. You could sit outside the house. This is a yep. problem, I'm telling you. No, when you are monitoring, what are you able to do with that? Capture packets. Capture things that are in the air. Essentially, if okay. I'm on my banking situation, you could possibly capture banking. my banking information, which then allows you to log in and maybe change a few passwords, and all of a sudden you read all the money into your I'm account. I'm going to wait to answer that until we get to the last oh, one. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> we have a sub one gigahertz, so that's things like uh, your fob, if you have a smart fob. Yeah. That's going to be things like your wireless network for between your appliances, Internet of Things type devices, oh, yeah. your thermostat. Mm -hmm. uh, that's also your garage door opener. 
We have 12, 15 seconds left. I just want to make sure we get to this okay. last okay. part because there's a lot of pieces here. Well, what, what else do you have here? The pineapple is going to be the big one. Okay, that's the big one. Yep. What's that? Uh, the Pineapple is going to be a security device that allows you to sit at Starbucks. You log in to Starbucks network and you get on your banking website. But how do you know you really connect to Starbucks? This guy acts as a man in the middle. When a, someone turns this on, mm -hmm. it clones Starbucks mm -hmm. and then it broadcasts yeah. Starbucks. So when you log uh, into your banking or social media site. Or you're at, let's say, the airport and yep. all of a sudden you're on the airport Wi-Fi. It funnels through this. And but it collects you don't know all that. of your information as you're, you know, surfing the web, logging into your bank. Guys, I, I want to get these guys. Thank you, thank you for reminding us how vulnerable we all are. <laughs> but you know what, though, you could be a part of the solution, and you can enroll now at this semester's cybersecurity program. Ooh. You can register through January 22nd with no additional late fees. For more information, just call the number or visit the website on your screen. Really cool stuff happening in this mm -hmm. arena. And uh, whenever the what's the the hackers that come into town? What's it called? Black hat. Black hat. When the black hat conference mm -hmm. comes to town, oh boy, don't go on Wi-Fi. Just throw your phone in a toilet. You're probably yeah. best doing that.